All right, folks, here in South Arizona, if you look at our wall of steel studs there, so we got the regular wall of steel here. We're going to be starting out with our dishwashers, microwaves that we've taken down. Arizona Specials, we're able to get them all into that thing there. Got some other things from some family members this time as well, so those uh, cabinets as well. And we're going to be running mainly steel today, so let's check this out. Got a good little pile of leaf springs there, real good. And breaking down a lot of the, um, some of my electronics that, that has been up for sale, that hasn't been selling. I just broke them down, and as you can see, these are microwaves edge or microwave sides stereo sides etc and check these out here we're we're, we're, we're getting rid of like i said some stuff that doesn't sell tried to sell this thing it ain't going so it doesn't work either way so but i didn't think it would and over there is a very heavy cast iron tub i took advantage of having my son-in-law here today to get these things up into the thing because I, I got them up in there the first time and boy they were fun but let's uh let's check this out here check these little things out one little bonus before we start loading this thing up check out these old irons I'm not sure on the date on these, but I've looked up, they're going for 40, 50 bucks on eBay, but they're interesting. Uh, you hardly ever see this little cloth braided wire like that anymore. It's very rare to see. And they work. Plug them in, they both work very well. So hey, we're blessed with cloud cover today. Thank you very much. Let's get this thing loaded up. All right, folks, as we listen to some Bobby Womack, if you think you're lonely now, wait until tonight. Damn, that's a jam. Well, let's see what we got here. We definitely got us a nice little run of steel down here today. Like I said, we got some good, heavy, chunky stuff. So we're going to really see how, what this what this pays off. Looks like the cloud cover is disappearing. Thank God we're done. <laughs> as you can see, we're still sweating. But hey, let's get on down there, see what we get. Thanks. All right, folks, here in Salvador, Arizona, here it is next morning, and here we are all roped down, tied down, ready to go down to the steel yard. We've got our good, heavy, heavy, good stuff like this old saw here. That thing might cost a thing way a ton. Don't forget, we got the cast iron sink. Got a lot of good, heavy stuff. We got four or five TVs. We've got a good amount today. We'll see what we get. Let's head on down there. All right, folks, as we pass up a truckload of scrap cubes, here we go at All Metal Buys Scrap. We're gonna get up on the scale here and see what we got today. Ooh, that's a good one. Man, 8420, 8420, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. folks here in Southern Arizona it is empty bucket time and that means cash over time as always now we had a really good run today like I said I think it was that that the, the sink and the saw that that made it so heavy but we had 1240 pounds that's a lot for me and six cents a pound of course I'm not budging on that one but hey 7450 not bad at all not bad at all I'll take that all day definitely got some good diesel up in this thing here gonna get some gas up in that one there as well so hey let's get back to the other cities do some scrapping see you there We ain't talking about earrings and hair today. We are talking about scrapping. And today, we are going to be hitting the pretty neighborhood, the one with the beautiful tree-lined streets. And you get getting that and a few more. So let's go get it. Here we are in the tree-lined streets. Although I will say they have been a little lean so far. I've been driving around. I haven't been seeing all that much. But we are just starting out. So we'll grab us these. We've got a little single here, yeah. Oh, a little pool pole okay 
do the old trick. TV frame pieces. Can't seem to keep hold of. With all those extra pieces that you don't need. <laughs> they always do throw in extra pieces. Or so I'm told. Okay. I mean, here I go pulling up, seeing a whole AC unit, rads, and all that. It's the uh, it's the AC guys, just unmarked. They're, they're not. They don't have anything on them. But I li that's all I queued in on was those rads. I'm like, oh, we're getting them. <laughs> But not today. It looks like they're going to be keeping them. The, the, the AC companies here in Arizona, they keep their scrap. Believe me, they have. They, they even hire people. My son-in-law works for a place, and they, ha they have a guy who does nothing but break down the rads and turn them into the recycle place. So here they are very protective of it. Alrighty. Yeah, definitely a lean one today. Like I've been saying, I've been doing a lot of driving. I think I just saw another scrapper too. So, but hey, let's keep on going. Alrighty. That's, uh, a bit of metal here. Shovels, post hole diggers. Alright, let's tame this down a bit and we'll move on. Okay. Enjoying the others. Alright, that's a thing in here. Looks like someone's already been. Taking it apart. Beautiful. It's buggy. Oh, got okay. little wires going on there. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Blackberry. Wow. Well, these called the crackberry because people people couldn't get rid of those things. Well, they, they couldn't they couldn't get it out of their hands. <laughs> Just like the crack. What's in this here? Yeah. Wires. Okay. Okay, you're not so fluffy now, are you? Well, there, and let's see. Got anything going on? And grab this, and we'll take this and that out of their yard for them. Hold on. Well, there you go, folks. Can't beat that. Some Leonard Skinner to start out our day here at the Second City. Going to be hitting the area today that I worked for many years. It's kind of a narrow area. Going to be pretty much all alleys and condos today. So hey, let's go get it. Folks, first stop of the day. And I think we're already seeing evidence of picking. We'll get this and we'll see what we get today. Sure, why not? You stay there for now. It only grabs totes, but my uh, aluminum one has really uh, seen this last day is it's pretty bad so we're gonna grab this tote here for the R sheet aluminum good shape the other one's all jacked up too I got two aluminum ones I've had them forever and there we go I don't know how much scrapping I'll be doing but this is just messed up I think somebody someone had a party last night what do you think huh what are you thinking Someone had a party, huh? I'm thinking. Yeah, you can't even get through here. Can you tell this is a college town by the massive amounts of beers all over the place there? Ah. Oh. And there ain't a single thing in this whole darn pile we're taking, but hey, I'm not gonna let this just sit like that. That's called being irresponsible, folks. <laughs> with the red cups going about their way and now we can get by all right yay get the back off for me how nice wow <laughs> damn everything good lord they done stripped that one 
So we batter up for alley baseball. Well, here we go. Okay, and this area has been really picked clean bad, so let's see here. There you go. So we're grabbing it. Another neighborhood was thoroughly, thoroughly picked, believe me. They got everything out of that one, just about. So we're, we've hit it to another neighborhood, and well, we will hopefully find some more stuff. Let's get the condos are gonna be a little bit better here. Not been picked thoroughly so bad. Even on lean days, I won't take tangle ups. That stuff is nasty. <laughs> All right. Hey folks, I'm not sure if you can see it that well, but that circle, what, what used to be a Circle K is now a called a corner market, was where they filmed the uh, convenience store scene in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Right there, 1010 West Southern Tempe, Arizona. Not bad. I used to actually patrol this one for beer runs. I actually caught several beer runners coming out of this place. So interesting, a little side bit there. Hope you guys like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was looking for any you guys any metal or anything or Good morning and welcome to look. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes sir, this this is supposed to be the dump. It's all going to the dump, huh? Yes sir. Yeah, more aluminum. Alright. Well, Not expecting this, believe me. Thanks, guys. Good thing we haven't touched any of the metal. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Thank you. <laughs> so this must be the uh, where everybody dumps at dump the condos here. Thanks again for letting me pick through. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Okay, folks. Oh, hey. Yeah, one more. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Man, I tell you, folks, that was a surprise. Not often do you find the uh, the maintenance guys loading up the uh, the junk thing. That was pretty cool. I like that. It's a good hit. I saw something. Let's see. Yep, they're good. Well. Wow. Alright folks, so it's in Arizona. We're gonna call Second City here at this. Uh, it was a very fortunate stop, believe me, finding those maintenance guys and that whole big area with all the stuff, because otherwise, uh, I'm telling you, I, I've driven alley after alley after alley, and I'm just finding pick clean, pick clean, and more pick clean. So. We're gonna call it at that, and we're gonna head to the next city. I believe to, uh, it's gonna be maybe uh, the pretty neighborhood. Yes, so hey, let's go into that. Alrighty, we found a steel meal there. Even got the hardware on it, look at that. Let's do long haul Sally ones here. First. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I'm just gonna run them off to the scrapyard, but 
Ah, thank you so much. Have a good day. Let's uh, get this thing tamed down, and we'll move on. It's funny, I didn't see that last steel meal till the very end of the street, but I came down the street because of this. Sweet El Camino alert, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Like it, a little TV action going on there. Come on, two of them, even better. Umbrella, a little piece of steel, on the TV. All right. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, thank you, sir. Taking the things off, I appreciate that. <laughs> Have a good one. Here's an interesting observation, folks, real quick. If you ever had kids, you know, and they've been in baseball, you know you've been stuck at baseball fields and sitting there all day long with nothing to do. Well, this place put a bar <laughs> right by the baseball fields so you can get good and lit and then go watch your kid play baseball. Yay! A little single here, gotta be <laughs> right over the barrel cactuses, right there. Okay, here you go. And that is a barrel cactus, man. These things, ooh, nasty, nasty little buggers. You run into one of them, which I have, you'll remember it. And I sure do. <laughs> we got us a first Arizona special of the day. Hey, look at that. There's that. Okay. That's a nice, that's a nice Mustang. Very nice. See what we got here. Little tail you fold up. No, you don't. So you can go there. get robbed <laughs> okay. okay sure all right folks PD story time yes PD story time once again and today we're gonna to be talking about something that all cops do and that's handcuffing handcuffing here today you are trained at the at the police academy how to properly handcuff people and believe it or not some people can really screw that up i remember there was one guy who actually didn't make fto because he was having problems handcuffing and a lot of other things but he'd sit there and just kind of you know but, but they, they teach you how to do it and part of being <laughs> training is you get to get cuffed up too a lot because there's like two days of, of uh, handcuff training and man <laughs> you, 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 you really get to see what it's like to be handcuffed at the time. I always carried two sets of cuffs on me at all times. Um, I was told that a long time ago, and uh, I carried one regular size and one oversized pair. And I also kept a pair inside the car and for the really big dudes, you know, because there are some guys where you're, you're literally using three sets of cuffs because they can't get their arms, you know, past like here. <laughs> and you gotta, you, you gotta get them in there. So, so like I said, I carried those three sets of cuffs on me. Now, today I have props. Brought, brought these with me. These are my day one OG. Uh, these are my uh, oversized cuffs. Now these, as you can see, are hinged. Okay? You can see that they're hinged. And the reason why they're hinged is because that way it, it just allows you more control of the person. Because without, with, with the chain, the opposite one. Now, this brand is called Peerless. Okay? Then we're gonna go on to uh, Smith and Wesson, okay? 
These I had almost from day one. These are Smith, the, the Smith & Wesson ones you can always tell because the Peerless has the lock in the middle. You can see the little lock right there. And Smith & Wesson has the lock right there, the unlock right there. Now all handcuffs take the same key. I, I don't have one with me today. I used to keep it on my, on my key ring all the time, like a little one, but when I retired, I figured, well, why do I have that anymore? One thing about chains, so like I said, you, you, you can grab them either way, and so this one does more control because what can happen is, is if they are if they start getting flinchy, and this happened to me, I had I was brand new, I grabbed somebody by the chain, and he went, and he started, and it, it'll pinch you, and it'll pinch you pretty good. And there's one other thing called leg irons. Now these were given to me by a sergeant when he was hired. He bought these himself. Um, these you use um, on, I would use these like, sometimes you get called down to the uh, the jail to take uh, a prisoner out to the uh, hospital or something like that. And basically, you can still walk in these, but you can't run. And they're just like any other, you know, regular handcuff, but they just go around your leg. One other thing I want to show you too is um, there's something called double locking the cuffs, okay? And I don't know if you can see it right there, but there's, uh, on the back of uh, a handcuff key, and I'll show a picture here. On the back of a handcuff key, there's a little post, and you can stick it in there, and you, you move that there, and then it won't, basically, it, it, it keeps the, the ratchet from ratcheting any further. So once you get them put on a person, that way they won't, like, like, like when they sit down, they, they clamp tight on them, and this keeps that from doing that. So that was my, those, are, those were my issue cuffs. And like I said, the one, these are uh, day one right here, man. 20, 24 years I did on those. It was funny, once you, it, it was inevitable. Whenever, the, the second you put cuffs on somebody, their nose itched, their ears itched. I got requests to scratch all kinds of parts of bodies that started itching, it was gross. I, if, if a girl had a bunch of hair in her, even, even the guy, if they had a bunch of hair in their face, I, I'd get it out for them because she's wearing gloves anyways, but I wouldn't scratch people. No, I, I didn't do that. We would actually get calls to uncuff people who had put cuffs on and didn't have the key or couldn't figure out the key. I, seriously, I, I saw them on the board and I went to, I believe I went to one of them, yeah. So yeah, those are handcuffs. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. And you stay this far, I'm gonna get one more. It's a real interesting story and a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good deal. I mean, it wasn't a good scene, but the way it came out was good. We got a call of uh, uh, sexual assault going on uh, over in, in a field uh, near this freeway. And it was coming from a cell phone. This was a little, from the mid 2000s, I'd say. And they had a thing called phase two, which it somehow used these triangulation things to, to put an area of where the phone was. And especially at that time, it was pretty rudimentary. Basically what the girl, well, some guy had attacked this girl and he took her behind a bush and was about to sexually assault her when she, she was able to get her phone out and hit 911 and just let it sit. Genius, genius of her to do that. And he didn't see the phone. And so the dispatcher heard it picked up heard what was going on and could tell what was going on and what was about to happen and so we started flooding the area because we, we kind of knew where it was like I said but we couldn't it, it wouldn't pinpoint exactly where it was so since we knew we were close me and another officer started whooping our sirens so whoop 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 and then the dispatcher could hear okay you're closer and I, I was actually farther away another officer was closer she said uh, hey you officer you're closer keep going keep going keep going and then eventually we, they, they got to him and I was I was around a different way but some some other officers got to, got to the guy and got him and put him in jail so very good on that and I was very glad that we caught that guy and it was a really interesting way of catching him so hope you guys enjoyed that one let's get back to Scott all righty what we got shot you know what that is I have a motor of some sort. Well, let's see what they got, if anything. Hey, how you doing? I'm not sure what this is, but... Wow, that's uh, that's nice. Wow, these are all. Wait a minute, these are cast aluminum. Whatever these are, these are all cast aluminum. What are these things? Master Pursuit by Grower's Choice. Grow lights.
fixture. Oh, look at that. Oh, I see one else. Yep. I've gotten these before. Off they go. To their new home. sell this for eight bucks a little DVD player okay so, helium aluminum or heat rocks oh no these are like heaters for oh yeah this is that's got electronics in it. Several boxes, several wires. Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. Cleaning gel hand soap. Yeah. A little grocery shopping on the curb, why not? Hey, where'd you come from? That's wood. That was a good one. That sure changed the looks, looks of things now, didn't it? There we go. You know what? It's all steel. are half plastic half steel brake lines okay, there we go oh and we've wandered back into the farms again as you can see on our way heading back here. This area is kind of close to the house. I like that. Okay, all right. Well, hey folks, looks like the side of Scrappity's truck. <laughs> hey, let's do a wrap up here. Now we started out kind of lean today, as you could tell. We were driving and driving and driving, but we finished good and strong. I like that we got the, uh, got the good, I think those are, I think those, those are grow lights and they're all really thick, chunky cast aluminum. Go through those and see if I can get those cleaned out. Grab some grills, a lot of miscellaneous steel today, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. So thank you again, folks. And I just checked the uh, YouTube studio up. We are at 1913 subscribers. Thank you so much. I mean that really so much. Let's, let's, let's get 2,000, then the 5,000, 10,000. Let's just keep it going all the way up, all the way up. Thank you again, folks. I mean it always from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.